Good evening. Uh, I'm sitting with Mr. Claude Bigley from Switzerland. He's a regular at uh, most Horace's meetings I've seen in Europe, but possibly the first time to Russell Kaima and the other world for us meeting. So my first question comes to you. What do you see as a differentiator in this kind of meet as opposed to what you've been doing in the past? Have you had your views on that, sir? Well, I like the type of meeting because you meet with a lot of people. It's not only what is in the official sessions, it's what happens outside the sessions. Right. It's the unlikely meetings with people you never met and you're at table with them and suddenly you discover. I was yesterday night, for example, with the former minister of the energy of Jordan and he's an entrepreneur. It was such a joy, such a discovery. So those meetings are the opportunity to meet with a few planned and a lot of unplanned people. And it's very great. Every time I learn something and every time I take away. Lovely. You talked about the word entrepreneurship and I, I would like to take on that word from there, but there are a lot of entrepreneur skills available in the Western world and they are also sometimes uh, given support by government, people, press. It's kind of a do it down thing. But little lower in the Arab world, the entrepreneur skills and all. What could be the cause for this? First of all, yes, you are right. It's less in the Arab world, but it's also not so perfect in okay. Europe, for example. Okay. Um, for me, the real entrepreneurs are people in California, in Boston. Now I would say Chinese can be very entrepreneurial. Uh, it implies taking risks. It implies working hard, accepting to go to the unknown, to explore and to risk what you have. In Europe, we are pretty much risk adverse and culturally somebody who failed would not be given too often a second chance uh, as opposed again to California. Here uh, what we need are people who go up to the end of their dream. Okay, true. I agree with you. Now coming to another point about energy we were talking about earlier, uh, there's a feeling in the, our part of the world that rich countries of Europe, especially countries like Switzerland or richer countries of the European region, America, uh, their desire for renewable energy is very low. I mean, because they have used a lot of energy, but since it is possible to <coughs> afford it, uh, there is no enthusiasm to go for it. Has that been your experience? And since you are a person who is a votary for renewable energy, what will drive people to go for renewable energy when you can afford normal energy? It's a very good question, and the answer is complex. I think everybody understands that the energy supply will not be unlimited, so we have to go for something which is renewable. Every understands as well that climate change will be a reality. But at the same time, in countries with crisis, they hardly would put it as a top priority. And if you want to favor the renewable energies versus the cost of petrol or coal, or nuclear, which gives you an electricity at about four to five cents of a dollar a mm. kilowatt, you have to have public policies which will cope during three to five years <coughs> with the lower profitability mm -hmm. of the renewable. And unfortunately, we have seen it in Europe. Five years ago, countries like Spain had very favorable incentive programs. Mm. Now that they are close to bankruptcy, they've changed completely and many of the renewable energies have fallen down. It's okay. a pity. Exactly. I think in the long term that current downturn will recover and I really think renewable energies will be powerful wow. and flourish. <coughs> very good but later. not today. Not